Yes, welcome along to Up in the Ante in association with Bet365 with David Jennings and Gavin Lynch. And Gavin, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Yes, we'll be looking ahead, of course, to the 2020 Chatham Festival, but we've got a little treat in store for Up in the Ante viewers this week as it is a Christmas special. So we're going to be previewing all the big races over the festive period. Yes, you lucky ducks. Gavin, how was your week? Uh, Punta is not so good. Last few quid. Liverpool won in the Club World Cup was great. Uh, but definitely the highlight of the week so far, uh, the highlight of the Christmas is Fallon Sherrock in the darts. <sighs> what Fantastic. a player. What a story to beat the 11th seed Sulevich in round two. Just I, uh, like I, I obviously was delighted she won, but I just find Sulevich terrific to watch. Okay. That style is just unique. <clears throat> he makes Jockey Wilson look elegant. He is like, I don't know how you describe, in jockey terms, who would it be like? Sulevich? Oh, Unconventional. Like Barry Connell. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're not watching Barry, but terrific achievement. Anyway, I can't wait to see her next match, yeah. Yeah, no, she is a star. But you're here to hear all about the racing over the festive period, and that's what we're going to do. As ever, we're going to start off with our questions from the crowd. Yes, where you, the viewer, gets to interact with myself and Gavin. And the first question this week comes from Kenny Jones. Great name, Kenny. And he wants to know about surname. Do you think surname goes to Cheltenham in March? And if he does... What race will he go for, Gavin? Uh, tough question. See how he gets on in the King George first. Obviously, he'll go for the middle of February. He'll go for the Beth Fair Ascot Chase, the grade one that he won last year. He may or may not go to Cheltenham. I'd obviously be very worried about him going left-handed, as everybody is. Um, I looked at his video there yesterday. Uh, his last run over fence two years ago, he definitely jumped out to his right. So whether he goes for the Ryanair, goes for the Gold Cup, he'd have a small chance, but I definitely couldn't back him. Is it 50-50 that he goes to Cheltenham? Maybe because Aintree's left-handed, so either he goes from Ascot in the middle of February and waits for Punchestown, perhaps, mm. but he might go to Cheltenham, but I couldn't fancy him. Okay, and we're going to hear more about surname later on in the show when we'll be previewing the King George. The next question comes in from Peter Cook, and Peter wants to know, what is our favourite all-time Christmas memory? I thought this was a brilliant question. Yeah, brilliant question. Thanks yeah. very much, Peter. It's fantastic. So yesterday, you sent me this question, so I had a few categories, if that's all right. Oh, you've yeah. gone all out here. I have, yeah. I started writing down names and it just got longer and longer. Classiest I come up with Hurricane Fly and Isterbrack winning three and four times each at Leperson on Christmas. Uh, the funniest one ever was Paul Carberry waving at Jim Cullity to come on. Oh, beef for salmon. Yeah, against Best Mate. Yes. I thought that was hilarious. The craziest one was Roger Lockman on Central House. It's that just, famous ad? I, you know, not trying to... Oh, Roger. Yeah, it was a bit sad at the time, but uh, it you was, remember the name it was of the crazy. Horse? Central House Very good. High Cly. Uh, the most spectacular horse at Christmas I used to watch years ago was Desert Orchid. Uh, the most brilliant had to be Cato Starr winning five King Georges. Uh, my second favourite memory ever was Florida Pearl winning the King George. At that stage, Ireland never won a King George. It was the mid-70s since they'd won one. So him to win the King George, Adrian Maguire, was great. Oh, yeah. But certainly my number one is uh, Archibald uh, beating Rooster Booster oh. in the Christmas hurdle. If anybody hasn't seen it, go into YouTube and type it in. Um, Rooster must he have been was, 30 lengths clear. He was 25 to 30 lengths clear, mm. even three out, even turning in. And Paul Carby just came and came, and eventually he just got there. And afterwards, uh, John Frankham, who we used to love listening to, said um, that it was definitely the right of the year straight away. And even when they interviewed Paul Carberry, he said, uh, I was always going to get there, and I got there too soon, he said. <laughs> Vintage Carberry. But it was great. Fantastic race to watch. Go and see it. Yeah. What was your favourite? One of my favourites horses of all time, Hartsball. I'm, only, I'm going to keep it simple, Gavin. I'm just going to have one favourite okay. memory, and it was, without doubt, the 2012 Lexus, where unbelievably Ruby Walsh somehow managed to get Tidal Bay up to beat Fleming Star and First Lieutenant. And I suppose we went through every emotion during the race, because I think the neutrals all wanted Fleming Star to be this superstar, yeah. stay in chaser, to win a gold cup. And up until maybe 10 strides before the last fence, it looks like we were seeing something really special. Yeah, yeah. And then he just completely emptied under Andrew Lynch. But for he Ruby to get up, the commentary from Desi Scahill, people not knowing what was going on, what was going to win, who got up, even passing the line, it was quite clear cut in the end, but it was still quite tight. Yeah, it, was it, was, finish. it was remarkable. So yeah. the 2012 Lexus, Peter, that is my all-time favourite Christmas memory. Our next question comes in from a regular contributor to the show. It is Bernard McKee, and Bernard wants to know about Native River, Gavin. He thinks that Native River has a good chance each way in the Gold Cup. What do we think? I wouldn't think so. Uh, he's 10 in January. The last 10-year-old uh, to win the race was, as we said before, 22 years ago. Um, he needs heavy ground. Like, you've got seven-year-olds at the minute, lost in translation, Ken by Elbow and Foda. They're all turning eight in January. He's turning 10. Unless the ground came up very heavy and some of them were injured, I couldn't have him. No. Unfortunately, Bernard, I couldn't have him either. No, if, if, no. Like if Native Good River, horse now. Great if horse. Native River wins another Gold Cup, 
Will doesn't say I'll much be disappointed. Do you know, it's yeah. just like, where's all these superstars lost the translation? Yeah, and it's all hard this. to come back and win at that age, but he's a super horse, but I wouldn't think so. No, Bernard, it's a no from us. And our final question comes in from Paul McCain, and this is possibly the best question we have ever <laughs> had on Up in the Ante. And Paul wants to know, is what horse currently in training best describes David and Gavin? And we have to pick each other, okay? okay. So you have to pick the horse that yep. best describes me, and I pick I the horse that best describes I thought I'd say in 10 seconds. Did you? Well, was... well hold on, I, I'll give mine first. Okay. Mine is, um, and I was thinking about it and I went through different horses, and the one I came up with is Super Sunday. Okay. Now, I'll tell you why, right? Super Sunday chips away, earns his prize money, rock solid, you know what you get. He just runs the way you expect almost every time. That's like you. You're a really successful punter. You chip away, you earn your prize money, and then there's one or two big days a year where you will get maybe an odd lucky 15 up, or you might get a nice little Trixie or treble up. It just wouldn't be as quick as Super Sunday if you saw me playing football. No, no, you have a nice little turn of foot. So I just thought Super <laughs> Sunday best summed up. Okay. You know what you're going to get with him. It's going to be a profit during the year. And to me, you are Super Sunday. Okay, I'm happy with that. Okay. Uh, yours, I thought of in 10 seconds, was under so. <laughs> I, I, I was trying to come up with the equine equivalent Tigger from Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> and I came up with under so. Always in good form. Uh, full of enthusiasm. Uh, likes to lead. Presents the show. Uh, this is quite clever. Fairly hyper, um, but reliable and. Ah, thanks, Gavin. A grade one. That's very nice. Now. Thanks very much. So, on the so. On the so. I kind of feel bad now calling <laughs> you Super Sunday. I might change it to Altior or something after that. No, that not. was this week's Questions from the Crowd. So, now, folks, it's time for the week that was. It wasn't as busy as other weeks, Gavin, no. but we still <clears throat> learned plenty. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see Paisley Park in the March Hurdle was an 11th hour withdrawal because of the ground, but we did have racing at Ascot and there were plenty of Cheltenham clues. There was, we're going to start actually last Monday with uh, Nace, a horse called Yukon Lil. She only had to jump four hurdles, she was wicked impressive. It wasn't the, the greatest race, but she probably achieved the same as Dolcita achieved in Tremor. Uh, she's 20 to one, Dolcita's 92, so too big of a gap, but Luke, Yukon Lil is worth a mention. But Poem won uh, the beginner's chase over two mile three, it's 16th for the JLT. That won't win at Cheltenham, I don't a think. A brilliant jumper, though. Yeah, very, very good. Really good. Just not liking the way he's emptying a little bit. Doesn't finish that strong. No, Did the same no, at Fairy Brilliant jumper, though. Uh, Wednesday in Newbury, we'd Fraser Ireland uh, win for Nicky and Nick. I was impressed. Yeah, won very well. Won by 11 lengths, 25 is the triumph. It was rated 75 in the flat. But well, last there's no year's outstanding winner. triumph performer at the no, moment. No, there's not, not, not particularly, no. Uh, there was a gorgeous horse, won him, uh, a novice hurdle, the big breakaway. Did you see him? Love him. Yeah, gorgeous horse. I he just think. It's going to be like Battle Over Dying going to Cheltenham last year. Yeah, it's going to come a year too He's soon. He's all legs and he just hasn't filled out. And he, After his point to point, he cost €360,000, mm. which is amazing. He's now two from two over hurdles. He's uh, tens with Bet365, I think, for the Bartlett. As you say, it might come a year too soon, but he's going to be a gorgeous I'd horse. prefer to actually back the big breakaway to win a gold cup at some stage in his career than take that 10-1 to for the Ballymore. I think he's a horse for the future. Definitely, yeah. He's definitely an aim to, to, keep, to keep in mind for, for the future. Uh, on to Friday in Ascot, Angel's Breath. Mm. I thought it was really impressive. Uh, it won by 20 odd lengths. He's out for the season. Yeah, he's out for the season yeah, with a leg injury. So yeah. He won by 23 lengths from Montes Avalois, who's only seven and a half lengths behind Champ. So mm. it was a good run. Now he's three from three at Ascot. He's not maybe quite as good going left handed. Well, Montes Avalois jumped terribly, so don't use that form literally. But uh, Angel's Breath, it's a pity that he's injured. Mm. Uh, Master Debonair beat Ribble Valley uh, by an easy eight lengths. Now that was good. Yeah. That was good. He's solid. He's one of them that'll finish in the first three or four in the Supreme. Uh, 14th for the Supreme. Yeah, I think there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, the horse that was in third round in ice race called Time Flies By, and that mm. ties into the bumper winner that day, Israel Champ. Uh, he's only a four-year-old. He gave four pounds and uh, almost a two-length beat into Soaring Glory. Mm. He had been two from two uh, in bumpers. I, I just think ground might be key to Israel Champ. He looks, he doesn't look the fastest horse, but he certainly stays mm. going. Mm. Uh, and again, the horse he beat in Cheltenham the last time was Time Flies By, so... Mm. The farm was quite good. Uh, Thurlis was called off on Saturday, as we know, with the fog. In Ascot, Riders on the Storm, who probably would have won the Caspian and Caviar Gold Cup the previous week only for a clerical error. Uh, very, very impressive, uh, beaten on the blind side by seven lengths, given at seven pounds. It was as good a jumping performance around Ascot as you would see. Yeah, 14 to 1 for the Ryanair seems very fair. Mm. They were quite bullish afterwards, but the Ryanair. Mm. Uh, the World's End beat one of your horses, Lammy Surge. Um, I don't what know how do we make a Lammy? I don't know how price he touched and run, and he must have been very, very low. 103. 103. Uh, he went two or three lengths clear, and then threw in the towel that he has done well, before. I, now, no, I, I'm just saying he didn't I battle. Know, I know he didn't battle, right? But I have an issue with this, right? People call in Lammy Surge, Archibald, Rogues, right? 
Why is it that the horses that give jockeys everything on the bridle, they want to race, they want to go faster, they want to give you everything on the bridle, they're the rogues and the Dinos Beanos of this world who are yeah, absolutely, the jockeys need to earn... Like Manny Sorge is a bit like Paul Pogba. Ah, that's harsh. <laughs> it's not. Is he? He is, yeah. But the, he's given you everything on the bridle. He I, wants to race, I and yet he's Roy a King. rogue. I'd turn over Roy Keane than Paul are we Pogba. Not, are we not labelling rogues to the wrong horses? Maybe. Was Dino's Beano not a rogue? Or Brave Inc. are these horses that I'm needed the Inca, jockey no. to get stuck into them? Whereas these horses are giving you everything on yeah, the well, bridle. Yeah, but they were probably a bit lazy. didn't have as much talent, but they were resolute and they fought for you. Okay. Well, I, I think, I think Lammy Sarge gets some bad press. Okay. Uh, he won't, he won't win press. the world hurdle anyway. Oh, sorry, the, the stairs hurdle. Uh, not so sleepy, absolutely bolted up in the Betfair <laughs> Exchange trophy off 127. I don't know what it's going to get off the handicapper, but if it appeared in a Carl Cup or in the county hurdle, it'd have a chance. Mm -hmm. And the last one to mention on Saturday was Precious Cargo. Uh, it was two, two out of three over hurdles. It was six to Felix Deji in entry. One by 23 lengths. It ended up being a two horse race, 20 to one to the Arco. Beat nothing, jumped well. Yeah, nice horse. Nice horse, yeah. yeah. I could see him turn into a brand advisor. So quite a week than normal, but uh, there was a few noteworthy performances. There certainly was, and that was the week that was. So now, up in the anti viewers, we move on to the stat of the week. Yes, each week, Gavin Lynch picks out a race at the Chetland Festival where stats are key. And this week, Gavin, it is the turn of the Magners Gold Cup. Yeah, the Gold Cup, yeah. I'm going to talk about a few categories, age, age, track, class, class, and current form. Age, age, and class, yeah, class. Yeah, a couple, of, yeah, couple okay. of points in each one. Go uh, for it. The last, as we mentioned before, the last 10-year-old uh, to win it was 98, 22 years ago. Don't be back in older horses. Uh, don't be afraid to back a young horse in the Gold Cup. Two out of the last three winners of the Gold Cup were seven. You'd never really think of a Gold Cup. By the time you do novice hurdle and novice chasing, that they could win at seven. But Size and John was seven, Album Photo was seven. So don't be afraid of a younger horse. Uh, even Long Run won it at six. Uh, seven of the last uh, 12 winners in the top three in the betting, so it's quite good for punters on the day. Uh, in terms of the track, all 12 uh, winners had run previously at Cheltenham, which is no surprise. Lovely. And uh, all 12 winners had also won a grade one previously before they gone to Cheltenham, so they Lovely. have the class. My and horse is ticking all these boxes. In terms of class as well, they were all rated over 166. Beautiful. So they need to have class. And uh, 10 of the 12 winners uh, had at least one run that season. And... You know, sorry, you had one win that season. So you have to have current form, you have to have the class, you have to be used to the track and also maybe... How unusual was it for Album Photo to have just a one run at Tremor and yeah. then win the yeah. Gold Cup? I presume that was the first time that was done. Yeah, that's... Not... Native River won once as well, didn't he? Yeah, that wouldn't be normal. Usually they have two or three runs, mm. but um, yeah, especially coming from Tremor. Mm, mm. And is then he's going to do the same this year, apparently? Yeah, it looks like that, yeah. Okay. So when you... Well, we used to work for Best Mate. He used to have very, very mm. few runs when he was winning his three Gold Cups. So when we're putting all these stats into yeah. our machine and we're trying to pick the winner out of the machine, what does Gavin Lynch come out with? Uh, loss in translation is the right favourite. Loss in translation is the right favourite. Yeah, it and is, yeah. the winner, me thinks. I'm a big loss in translation fan, but we're going to come to the King George later on in the show. Now, up in the anti viewers, have we got a treat for you? Of course, we're talking about the Cheltenham Festival, but this week, for one week only, we have got a Christmas preview section. And here it is. Yes, we're going to preview all the big races over the Christmas period. And Gavin, there's only one place to start, and that is with the Labrooks King George at Kempton on December 26th. And what a race we have in store. This is, I, I can't remember being so excited about a race outside of Cheltenham than this King George. We've been spoiled over the last six weeks. There's been a big race literally every weekend, but this, this looks like This is the being, biggest so far. Yeah, and it's definitely the biggest race over the Christmas. Okay, surname first of all, your thoughts. Brilliant right-handed, brilliant the last day to beat Altior, first starts to do it uh, over hurdles or fences. So yeah, he's a lot going from. Right, look. Will he stay? I'd say so. Harry and Paul, if you're watching, and they probably are. Probably, yeah. Close your ears. I'm not convinced really? about surname. I'm not, no. Why, well, do you think Altior didn't run his race the last day? Or? Yeah, I just think when, when you look back at the race at Ascot, it, at no stage did it look like the Altior of, maybe not last season, but the season before. There was no enthusiasm. His jumping was sluggish. And even when Harry Cobden was interviewed after the race in Surname, he said he didn't feel he was travelling that well for the first half of the race. I have serious question marks about that form. I have serious question marks about his performance last year when he beat wait, Waiting Patiently. I think there was a lot of non-stayers in the race. Look, it's my opinion. Yeah. I would be absolutely thrilled if Surname was the superstar that Paul Nichols thinks he is. But right now, I don't think he is. And I think... Lost in translation should be a strong favourite. I think you're too hard in surname, but I would probably just uh, go for lost in translation. Can't see myself having a bet. Going to sit back and enjoy it. It's too hard a race to to back a horse, and I think. 
I think it's too good of an opportunity to turn down with the price lost in translation. Was he around seven to four ish? So I just think with lost in translation, people are, are saying that he doesn't have the pace for King George. He had the pace to beat Deputy Side yeah. over two and a half at Cheltenham. I think he's got pace, he can be ridden differently. He's versatile tactics wise, where surname mightn't be. And with Tisselcrack in there, I just wonder will Tisselcrack ruffle the feathers of surname up front and set up for lost in translation? I think Colin Tizard's on record as saying a while back that he mightn't be as good right handed, but he jumped straight at Carlisle, so I wouldn't worry about that too much. Okay, so just about lost in translation? Yeah, just, yeah. And by the way, even if he finished second to surname, uh, he'd still be deserving favour with the Gold Cup. Okay, well, my suggestion is lost in translation, and my other selection, my other suggestion is to do a forecast with lost in translation and Clan Desobo. Okay. I think Harry, I think you've picked wrong. So moving on to the other big feature on December 26th, and it is the race that we sponsor. It is the Racing Post Novices Chase, and we see Lorena against one of your favourite horses in training, Fakir de Dares. Yeah, I think the tactics in this race are going to be key. Uh, you've got uh, Royal Rendezvous, you've got Jingle, you've got Fakir du Dury, and possibly even Notebook. So you have three or four front runners there. There'll be a lot of pace on, you'll have to jump well. Fakir du Dury will jump well. Lorena uh, doesn't get any weight this time. They're both getting weight off the rest. In Chetham, she will get the seven pound off Fakir du Dury. So he'd want to beat her this time if you're going to beat her again in March. I'll just go for Fakir du Dury, but all eyes on Lorena's jumping. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the Lorena camp here. Are you? Yeah. I, I was, a great race. I, 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 she got a bit low at certain stages at, at Goran, especially up the home straight. But I just thought that performance, I thought it was very, very good. Yeah, they cantered round, but this time they'll be flying. Mm. The, the ground, I think, on the chase track is like yielding, yielding to soft in, in Leprechaun. Should we read anything into Paul Town and staying at home to ride Lorena, not going to Limerick, obviously, to ride Faheen, and not going to Kempton to ride Footpad? Oh, there'll be no point in going for riding Footpad. Anyway, he won't win, but... Um, Oh, uh, Lorena, yeah, great mare, great chance. I still think Fakir Dudri will out jump her. Okay, so your selection is? Fakir Dudri. And I'm with Lorena. Moving on to the Paddy Power Chase, which is on December 27th. It's wide open, it's very interesting. There's a lot of potentially well handicapped horses. Gavin, what do you like? It's eight or ten to one the field, it's a, usually a nightmare. Um, I'd give if Manella Times gets in, I think uh, he's number 18 in the ballot. Uh, it won over two and a half and Navin off 122. I think it's in here off 128. If it gets in, that would have a, an each way chance. Okay, the one that I, there's two that I like in the race. Uh, my first selection would be Manila Fair. Uh, Noel Mead won the race a couple of years ago with a very young horse that was called, I'll think of it later on in the show. Okay. But anyway, won it with a five year old. He's going there with a novice in Manila Fair. But I just think if the ground is bottomless for Manila Fair, I think that's when he comes into his own. He's a good jumper. He's a strong stayer. His form on deep ground is really, really good. And the other one that I think has got a great chance is Expatriate, okay. who I think is unexposed over three miles. I think he could have more to offer on, over this trip. I'm not sure if it fully stays three miles, but yeah. I think he does. I think he does. So my two against the field would be Manila Fair and Expatriate and Manila Times for you. Yep. Okay, moving on to the Savills Chase. And what a race we have in store at Leprecent on December 28th. It's the return of Kemboy. Yeah, um, Willie Mullins' record in this race is quite poor, to be honest. He's only won it twice. Uh, Kenboy last year bolted up, uh, had a prep run in Clamel for it. This year it doesn't. Uh, there's 16 entered, so you should get three places if there's eight or ten, more than eight. Uh, I'd give present and Percy if he runs. He may not run, but if he ran, I'd give it a good each, each way chance. Okay, I think this is road to respects Gold Cup. Do you? I don't think he can win a Gold Cup, but I think on this ground, on a left-handed track like Leprechaun, it's flat. He's been there, he's done it. Very unlucky in the race last year. I think, I just think this is his day. He reaches a certain standard and he's, he's won mm. grade ones, etc. I just think the other two favourites might be a bit classier than him. Okay, there we go. Road to respect for me and for you. Present Percy each way. Presenting Percy for Gavin. The Matheson Hurdle is the feature race on the final day of the Leprechaun Christmas Festival, Gavin. And it sees the return of Classical Dream. I'll have to go for myself on this. Super Sunday. <laughs> no, I won't. Uh, I'll have no bet in this race. I can't figure it out. I won't go against Classical Dream, but his jumping is still a worry. It was very sketchy in the Morgiana. Um, he might win it. Will I back him? No. Court Sublime, not totally in love with the horse, was very impressive in the north. So I'll just watch it. Well, I'm a massive Court Sublime mm -hmm. fan, and I tipped him at a huge price on this show last year for Chetlam. But to me, pff, the betting's all wrong here. I think Classical Dream should be shorter. Yeah. I think Court Sublime is too short. I think Classical Dream, 
on this ground will will make up for his the softer uh, the better for yeah, classical yeah. dream yeah i think he'll make up for his punches down mishap and the other race we're going to have a look at is the carl welsh national at chepso on december 27th and elegant escape is a reasonably short price favorite here yeah Gavin. but deserves to be won the race last year at 151 uh, runs this year at 160. Uh, it's running off the same rating that ran the ladbrooks trophy stayed on very well after last and in future it's going to run off 164 so it's four pound well four pound well in Okay. It's a furlong further than last year, but that doesn't matter. But I think, uh, yeah, it's quite a confident selection for me. Yeah, and I think I'll back that. Yeah. Okay. The one that I like is Yala Enki, who just was a bit fizzy in the in the Labrox Trophy. I thought got that out. First of run system. for Nichols. It was the first run for Nichols. Jump great, quick jumper, stays. Chepstow. To me, yeah. he ticks a lot of boxes. Yeah, last like year, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah he'd be a good chance, yeah. So it's elegant escape yep. for you, and it's Yala Enki for me, and obviously Gavin. It's a huge period for punters the christmas period last year oh wow how bad was it it was the worst four days for punters i can remember honestly you had a bad four days i did i gave up on day four did i you? raised the white flag yeah really yeah you started playing monopoly or something i did so. <laughs> yeah with the kids okay but uh, last christmas was 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 tough and it's going to be good for irish viewers who can't make it to leprosound limerick or down royal because on december 26th yeah they're going to have uh, a second channel i think it might be channel 422 on sky have a look through your tv guide but um Brilliant to have a second channel. You'd love to see a uh, race in TV that if they have like say a certain number of meetings, like whether it's four or five, that they have the second channel more regularly. Be great, but it's great. It's good. It's good. Excellent. So best of luck with all your Christmas punting. It is Christmas banker time. Yes, a new segment in the show where myself and Gavin are going to give you the name of one horse that you simply have got to back during the festive period. Gavin, I'll give you the honours. You can go first. Uh, if she shows up, Benny did you at the moment. She's even money. She's due to run the 28th in the three-mile hurdle at Leprechaun. Um, she's won seven out of eight for Willie. She's only beat the day she fell at Cheltenham. Um, she's won the French champion hurdle over three-mile one, so no problem with staying. I know they go slow in France, but even so, uh, she'll stay the three-mile Worried fine. that she didn't show up in the Hatton's Grace? Possibly. Um, Sorry to burst your bubble there. Now. No, but Willie is just a patient man. Uh, even with the mares, he doesn't run them maybe that often before Cheltenham anyway. So, a uh, second favourite at the moment is Bacardi's beaten nine lengths by Honeysuckle. Third favourite is Apple's Jade and Penn Hill. They were out with the wash and so on. She'll win if she shows up. Yeah, you're pretty confident. Yep. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go for one at a little bit bigger price. It is in the 155 at Kempton on December 26th. It's a Cotto star at Novices Chase and it is Master Tommy Tucker. Black Op and Slade House have been kind of vying for favouritism in this race for the last week. I think this horse is so unexposed at three mile. I think he could be a star. I okay. really do. I think he's the real deal. He's obviously been fragile. He's had problems. But to me, what he was able to do last time at Kempton to fight back over an inadequate trip, to get back up, to beat such a classy hurdler. And there was good horse in that race. Thomas Darby was destroyed. I think you're only going to see the best of Master Tommy Tucker now that he steps up to three miles. And I think the two at the top of the market, Black Op and Slade House, I think they have plenty to prove this horse could be something special. Okay. Master Tommy Tucker, 155, Kempton on December 26th. So up in the anti viewers, all that's left to do now is reveal our anti post picks for the 2020 Cheltenham Festival. And Gavin, if you let me, I'm gonna go first this week. Sound. It is one that's from left field. Nobody saw this coming. Okay. Okay. It is in the Pertemps final, and it is a previous Cheltenham Festival winner. It is the storyteller who I think is exceptionally, exceptionally interesting. Okay, okay. let me tell you why. Uh, a previous winner of Chetland Festival won the Brown Advisory in 2018. Impressive performance, obviously likes Cheltenham. And I just think with the storyteller, when you win a big handicap like that over fences, you're caught between two yeah. stools. He's not a grade one horse, no. but he's not a handicapper. He's stuck somewhere in the middle and there's only a certain amount of grade threes and grade twos over fences. So Gordon Elliott has sat down probably with his race panner, Ryan McElligot, and said to him, they both said to each other, what are we going to do with this horse? And they said, we want to win at Cheltenham, so we're going to have to go back over hurdles. At the moment, he's rated 142 over hurdles, okay? He's 158 over fences. He got to a high of 161 last year over fences, okay? He's only 142. That's 19 pound lower than his, than his ceiling rating over fence of 161. He's entered in a, he was entered in the Pretemps qualifier at Wincanton. He doesn't go there. He's still entered in the Pretemps qualifier at Leprosen over Christmas. He might go there, but he's got plenty of options to go in qualifiers over the next couple of days. He's 16 to 1 with Bet365 for the Pretemps final at the Cheltenham Festival. I think if he sneaks into the places, we don't really want him to win. Let's be honest with you. No, you want to finish fourth. We want to fifth. finish third, fourth, or fifth, which I think the storyteller will do. 
I think this is the ultimate aim for the storyteller this season. It's only a guess, but I am pretty sure of it. And I think 16 to 1, the storyteller for the Potemps final, could look massive on the day. Okay. Good pick. Yeah, good story. Yeah, you happy with that? Oh, um, I see what you did there. Yeah, did. Uh, the jam man is a horse to keep an eye on as well for the Potemps if he yeah, goes Yeah, injured that at way. the moment though. You'd yeah, be a bit worried so, about that. Yeah, you might wait for it. So there you go. That's my latest pick for the 2020 Cheltenham Festival. It is the Storyteller. And now it is Gavin's turn to add to his selections. Going for another Gordon Elliott horse. Um, going for Glen Lowe to win any race at 10 to 1. Glen Lowe. Glen Lowe, yeah. Okay. A very um, eye-catching Glen Lowe. A very eye-catching Glen Lowe. He's poked my eye so many times, it hurts. Yeah. Um... He was second to Delta work off 137 at the Pretense final a while back. Quite inexpensive. Might have won 10 minutes. if he didn't make a mistake at the last. Yeah, might have. Now, don't forget, uh, Delta work that day ran off 139. He's rated 152 now over fences. Went back to a grade one and punched down afterwards. And he's rated 163 over fences. So it, that was a great run. Uh, there were three lengths there, the rest. Uh, he started over fences last January, had two runs. Then he came back uh, in November. He was fifth to five. And we mentioned him here on the show that he was an eye catcher that day. He ran in Navin uh, in his first handicap off 135 uh, 10 days ago, finished third over two and a half mile. That wouldn't be his trip. He was a big guy catcher, stayed on great. His jumping's fine. It's not amazing, but it's good. Um, he's already got a high enough rating to get into the Kim Muir. That's where he'll go, I'd say. Uh, Jamie Cotter, Derek, probably Jamie will ride it. I'd have a little worry that he, I hope he doesn't go and win the Thiestes in the meantime. That's the race that would also suit him. So watch him in the Thiestes, but... Um, Glen Lowe to win, uh, I'd say the Kim Muir, but it's 10 to 1 to win any race. Could we be talking about a very, very, very good horse here? Uh, he could be a very good horse. Could he yeah. be a grade one horse? I wouldn't think so, but he could be certainly a grade two or a grade three chaser, yeah. Okay. So, uh, Glen Lowe to win any race. Yeah, 10 to 1, I think that's okay. Glen Lowe to win any race at the 2020 Cheltenham Festival, 10 to 1 with Bet365. So, there you go, the storyteller and Glen Lowe, myself and Gavin's latest picks for the 2020 Cheltenham Festival. And that is it for this week's show. All that's left to do now is for me to wish you a very, very happy Christmas. The very best of luck with all your punting over the festive period. Enjoy all the fantastic action at Leperstown, Kempton, and basically everywhere in Ireland yep. and England. You are spoiled for Joyce. Happy Christmas. <laughs>